Hey everybody, I'm KRX and welcome back to another SWOT analysis in Europa Universe Saws 4, where we basically develop on the fly, we pick a random nation and we develop a strategy, a plan. We look at the internal situation, we sort of set the game up, we set the country up and we make different sort of opening move decisions in terms of what to do with our diplomats, how to manage our economy and see if there's any sort of instabilities within the country or just general sort of threats. Uh, strengths, weaknesses, how to maximize those, minimize our weaknesses, and, uh, you know, threats and opportunities and stuff like that. So basically, let's get into it. Let's select a random nation. Venice, boom, never played them before. Really want to play Venice? Never played them before, but man, are we going to have some good opportunities here. This is an interesting one, just because this isn't necessarily a tricky nation to play, but we're going to have a lot of options here, but I've never actually gone in and played. I do want to play Venice at some point. I haven't played Venice um, closest to Venice that I've played. What have I done? I have played uh, Austria, but that's a very different situation. I've played Naples. I've played Naples. Um, that may be the closest. I mean, we've done Ottomans. Uh, you know, we've done France. I mean, there's there's a bunch of nations. Uh, Switzerland. But Na Na Venice is such an interestingly unique nation. And, you know, we've had a lot of dealings with them because they're a major sort of European power. And, um, and yeah... This is a more complicated assessment, right? Of of sort of let's let's start with the opportunities and threats. Let's see who likes us, who doesn't like us. Now, typically, um, Austria likes us. Whoa, psh, mind explodes right now. That is insane. Austrian alliance right there. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna look twice. I'm not even gonna make any other decisions. That's a no brainer. Many times you load this up, that's not gonna happen. But that's what's so beautiful about E4. So this series is really focused on the fact that we're going to have to assess our ecosystem every time you play this game. In fact, even if you're in the middle of a run, it's not just at the start of the game. You're constantly assessing the evolving ecosystem. And every time you play the game, even with the same nation, you'll have a different ecosystem. We could load Venice up against, and, and usually Austria is probably going to rival us. But today they like us. That's really, really cool. Didn't even have to work for it. Boom, we got the Austrian alliance. Uh, Denmark has rivaled us, Byzantium has rivaled us, Hungary has rivaled us, and the Papal State has rivaled us. I, we're a good Catholic nation. I don't think we really want the Papal State to hate us, but there you go. Uh, they do. Byzantium is definitely a good opportunity to rival because they have land down here that we could totally take advantage of. Uh, we could get cores directly on this section of Byzantium. We could try to use a war over here uh, with justifications over here to sort of be able to springboard into Constantinople. It'd be amazing to take over Constantinople. Um, Genoa is also a country that I think has sort of a sprawling aspect to it that we're going to want to potentially take advantage of. I think we could totally rival Genoa if it'll let us. Looks like we're a little too powerful to rival Genoa. Uh, Milan is an option, although Milan doesn't really take us the direction we want to go. I think we want to sure up this coastline here, right? Naples would make more sense. However, Naples is, of course, under Aragon in a personal union. I just know that because we've played in this region a bunch of times. So we can look and see Aragon's right there. Who else likes us and doesn't like us? Aragon actually likes us. Aragon and therefore Naples actually likes us. That could be an interesting alliance right there. Just boom, boom, boom. Because we're a republic, we're not going to be able to get royal marriages with people. But yeah, I think actually we save one of these diplomats to rival, or sorry, to ally with Aragon. I think we ally with Aragon. Um... We are guaranteeing the independence of Albania at the start of the game. That's going to put us at odds with the Ottomans. It could be worth just rivaling the Ottomans because we know we're going to be fighting them. Again, I don't really... It, we're buttered up... or Sorry, we're bumped up. We're not definitely... We're definitely not buttering up Milan, right? Uh, but we're bordering them. And we might actually sort of just be able to move in there and attack them. I think we're more likely to potentially want to attack Ferrara. But Ferrara is actually our friend right now, and they're much weaker than us. It's going to cause a certain amount of aggressive expansion. I don't think we're going to worry about Italian uh, expansion here too early because that is going to sort of create a lot of aggressive expansion where we can mostly come down here and beat up Byzantium and some of these other little nations in this area without anybody caring, to be honest, which is kind of neat. We have Corfu right here as well, so that's going to give us an ability to get a uh, spy network on uh, Epirus. So we can get spine, uh, we can get uh, claims on all of sort of this Greece region here. We do have, oh, that's right, we have a vassal. Naxos is our actual vassal at the start of the game. So between uh, Nax, Naxos is a vassal, 
and between Albania as a guarantee, Austria and Aragon could be our allies. That That's all of our diplomatic relations right there. Done, done, done. Which is really, really neat. Um, so I think we end up sort of building a spy network on Byzantium. We could look at our missions. We might actually have a mission here to potentially... 20 years of technology cost reduction. That's kind of cool. But that's once we get printing press. That's way in the future. Owned by Venice. Total development uh, owned by at least 10%. So this is just saying develop uh, Venice uh, proper, the city of Venice. Develop this area. And we can move down here. These are, this is a completely unique custom tree with the new 1.3 Emperor DLC. Uh, we get a high income. There you go. Uh, we could work on that. Uh, expand the arsenal. It's going to say get a lot of sailors and also build up our naval force limit. We're going to want to work on that. That's going to give us a good admiral. Actually, they'll just give us good admiral. Cool. I think it'll be a while before we get up to 60% here, though, to be honest. That'll be a while. And then this is just monopolize the trade. I'm not really seeing free claims. I'm not seeing free claims. I think we're going to have to get our own claims here, guys. Yeah, we're going to have to get our own claims. It does look like eventually once we do both of these, and then we uh, retake the Aegean, which basically has us conquering these areas down here. So we have to, this is one of our main missions, is to beat up Byzantium, retake these provinces here. We'll want to beat the Ottomans to this point. So we absolutely want to do covert actions here. We know that Byzantium actually, ha uh, Athens is a vassal of Byzantium. So we absolutely want to do that and, and sort of get claims on all of this. We can conquer all of that land. We actually have this piece right here. We have Crete. Uh, we have the Vassal and Naxus here. We have uh, Corfu. We have just we have just land just peppering this whole little area here between the Adriatic, uh, the Gulf of Venice, and, and just all the way up and down this area and into the Aegean Sea here. So lots of interesting stuff there. I do think the, these guys like us. They are a good... This is actually a Catholic nation that has a lot of orthodox land. These guys tend to sometimes ally a lot of the Italian states because they are Catholic. I think we're going to want to beat these guys up. I think, honestly, we're probably going to want to beat up Albania, but right now I guess we'll protect them for now. Ragusa is defended by the Ottomans at the start of the game, but that's an option for conquest. It's interesting. I'm curious if there's any important trade centers over in this region, and for the most part, no, unless we're willing to go up into Hungary. This is uh, Belgrade is is controlled by hungary up there so that's a little bit further off um, we could look and see that there is indeed uh gold in this province here which is part of serbia getting a spy network on serbia could be interesting and in beating them up and sort of creating a, a buffer here and blocking out ottomans ottomans probably won't attack us for allied to austria and aragon will probably be immune to that we're also kind of waiting for the Ottomans to drop their guarantee of Ragusa because that's not going to hold forever. So I'm kind of thinking we either get a spy network on Empiris, which probably won't get much of an alliance network at all. That'll give us a foothold in this area, which we kind of already have because we already have islands all over the place. But I think maybe Serbia is going to be a little bit more isolated. We can look and see if anybody likes Serbia right now. Uh, it looks like they're likely to ally some of the dudes that are just sort of right next door, this little nation right here. But I think these guys, they, they are actually the same religion. So these guys are, are both Orthodox, right? So those guys are likely to ally, but that's not particularly scary for us. We are quite a bit more powerful. Let's get the spy network on Serbia. Let's get the spy network on Serbia. Uh, in four days, we will use a diplomat to get the alliance with Aragon. Aragon has not rivaled um, Austria, so that's good. They have rivaled Castile, though. So that puts them in a little bit of a threat situation. Hopefully Aragon. Aragon, what's your... And you've also rivaled France, you doofus. Don't rival Castile and France, man. You need one of those guys on your side. France actually kind of likes Aragon, too. Aragon might be able to get the, the alliance with Portugal. They might be able to get the alliance with, like, uh, I don't know, Savoy or something? Maybe? It's, it's, it's hard to say. Aragon's pretty powerful, so I think just getting the alliance with us will be good. Um... I mean, they like Austria. I don't know if they're going to reach that far for the alliance, but Aragon's probably not going to be attacked by Castile if they're allied to us, at least. Our navy is very powerful, and that is definitely one of our advantages at the start of the game. We have a 7513 navy. We'll want to spend some of our initial money to build that up. 
Let's move on to sort of looking at our strengths and weaknesses as a country. What is our actual economic situation looking like right now? We're making money. That's good. So we're definitely going to be able to afford to build up to our military sort of uh, potential here. I, although I don't really know if we're going to need a large standing army. Byzantium is only going to have six to 10,000 troops. Serbia is only going to have about six to 10,000 troops. We already have 18,000 troops. We, and we don't have a mission to build up our actual land force limits. There's no way Serbia is going to be... Actually, Serbia is in the list. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, the Pope doesn't like us, but I'm hoping they change their opinion of us. We could do uh, the Ottomans, because eventually there will be a little bit of a rub there. Um, I don't really think we're going to be going up against uh, Hungary anytime soon, especially if we are allied to Austria. Austria might get the personal union over Hungary anyways. Milan makes sense, but I don't think we're going this direction. I think we are going down this direction because I think getting power in Ragusa is going to directly feed into, like, like Genoa doesn't really spread over here, right? So I think we want to get land here. We want to build up our power base here. We're not really that interested in Western Italy that much. So let's finish this off by getting a uh, rivalry with the Ottomans. That's going to be a long-term rivalry. That's not going anywhere. Looks like we have a number of Orthodox uh, provinces here. And we don't quite have the missionary strength to deal with this at the moment. Do we have any policies that will help us with this? This reduces uh, a lot of opinion here with our fellow Catholic brethren, including the Papal States, just to increase a little bit of uh, a bunch of good stuff here, admittedly, but we're basically saying, screw the church, we're just going to focus on you know, you know, I don't know, stability and, and economy, and we don't really care that much about being pious, I guess. I don't think we want to hit that quite yet. Uh, that That's not exactly what I'm thinking. I think we want to embrace good Catholic reforms here. We have a 444. We are, of course, a republic. We're 70 to, 71 years old at the start, though. That's not great. We are incorruptible, but we are a little bit greedy, so we're losing some tax there. We couldn't maybe see if there's anybody that could sort of pay for themselves. I don't know if we have much of a production base, not like we do with trade and taxation. Trade guy would be pretty good down here. We have a level two, but that we don't have the money for that guy. This guy's pretty good. A little bit of discipline. It's pretty nice. Uh, we could focus military power just to try to get up in, the, in that mill tech right away and, and have an advantage in the early wars. So let's do that. Let's focus mill. We're guaranteeing the knights. Uh, we might drop that with the knights. We might drop that with the knights. I think it makes more sense to guarantee Albania. Maybe it makes less sense to guarantee Albania because they're really going to get destroyed by the Ottomans. Now, luckily, there is a truce between Albania, I believe, and the Ottomans. Actually, if we have a reconquest war against Albania, why are we guaranteeing the independence of Albania? They don't have a truce with the Ottomans, huh? The Ottomans could just declare on them within the first month. I don't know if I like this. I feel like if we wanted a more sure uh, starting position, a, a more sure start, I think we would drop this guarantee and just hope for the best, to be honest. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about Albania here and, and getting dragged into a war against the Ottomans, which we probably wouldn't be able to win. So I think we'll drop the uh, guarantee with Albania. We'll keep it with uh, the Knights. Maybe we'll beat the Ottomans to a war with Albania. It's hard to say. We are going to have a truce with them, whereas the Ottomans don't. I think it's inevitable that the Ottomans, if they want to take Albania, they'll take Albania. It's just how it goes. We're going to pick up the alliance with Aragon instead. So let's build more ships. And I think, really, it, it's kind of an interesting... There's kind of an interesting situation here because we want trade ships to be able to build, uh, boost up our trade power but I think galleys are what's actually going to allow us to win the early wars. I think I think having a larger sort of combat navy is going to be good. So I think let's uh, let's actually focus on getting some galleys. Galleys are incredibly cheap, so I think we'll go over our naval force limit here and just get six galleys. I think these six galleys plus the five that we have will will make us sort of rule the seas. And the extra cost from going over the force limit is not going to be too much. Let's try to grab our trade ships. Do we have... We don't start with any sort of historical admiral. We might want to roll an admiral. Same way that we're going to want to roll a general. We don't want to make our... We could make our leader into a general. 
uh, just because it, we're a republic, so I don't think we have any risk of falling into a, like a PU or anything. But this guy seems kind of powerful, to be honest. He seems kind of powerful. As a 4-4, I don't think we want him to die early if we can help it. So let's just traditionally kind of do this to roll a general, hope for the best. That is not good, but at least we have a siege pit. That's not good. We might have to uh, re-roll that. We don't have any estates because it looks like instead we have this little res publica thing. It's been a while since I played a republic. So we are not doing estates. Instead, we can sort of spend points to boost up different groups. Right now, the aristocrats are in power. That gives us a little bit of a morale bonus, which is good. Sailor modifier, we know we have a mission for that, right? Trade power abroad, though. Hmm. I don't know if I really want to reduce trade power abroad. Global trade power enhanced. Yeah, the thing is, we could try to like try to actually boost up one of these guys, right? By getting more global trade power and reducing naval maintenance, but that reduces taxation. Construction cost. Hmm. So we're just going to have to balance these guys based on what we're trying to do, right? The guilds actually looks kind of good later on when we want to build some buildings. I don't know. That is, This just seems weak to me. This whole, uh, the faction system just seems incredibly weak because, I mean, while, yes, we're getting 5% morale of armies, we're losing 10% trade power abroad. I mean, and we're getting some sailors. I mean, that just doesn't seem strong at all compared to all the benefits you can get from the estates holy cow the fact we don't have the estates kind of a bummer but we don't at least have to manage them at the start of the game uh, we do have uh, extra global trade power just being venice we also have extra sailor modifier it's like okay whatever if we get all this done we'll have amazing galleys but that's where that's all finished naval force limit modifier is going to go up quickly galley cost is going to go down quickly once we get that but that's going to be a little bit further in right diplomats trade efficiency so we're i mean naturally we're a big trading company and, and really what we're going to try to do is build up land contiguous land down this area so that we can just have the convenience of that contiguous land but also build up that trade power by getting a lot of the really important provinces in these areas like ragusa like uh, athens like this province from the ottomans and, and eventually sort of taking a hold over constantinople which can move into ragusa which can move into venice right so we don't have an admiral right now, but it does make sense to me that we'd want to roll the admiral. However, we're going to get a really free, amazing free admiral from this event. From this event. Sailors at 60%. 60% is going to be like 5,000. I mean, we're getting 600. We're maybe getting 800 per year. It's going to be a few years before we can get to that. But we're close. I, I think we probably save our diplomatic points knowing that that guy is going to show up eventually. And we just sort of protect trade in uh, Venice. Why would this increase? I, I think this hasn't balanced out yet, right? This isn't quite balanced out appropriately. I think that protecting trade in Venice is going to be a net positive. It's not going to ruin our thing. It just, I, I think the problem is the game. Sometimes the trade... Uh, estimations are incorrect at the start of the game you have to kind of let it run a little bit i'm almost kind of tempted to move over to constantinople on the basis that um being in constantinople will create a chain but is this moving to ragusa or is this moving directly to venice i don't know maybe since it's moving directly to venice maybe that is better but i think getting the merchants in the chain is good but our two merchants seem to be doing decently logical things but we have a third merchant where's our third merchant pulling down from uh a Vienna trade note here. Five percent. I mean, sure. I'm not sure. That seems logical. That seems logical based on the situation here. We have a decent amount of unrest, and I, I'm guessing a lot of this is due to the religious uh, instability here. These guys are Orthodox, so just intolerance, right? General intolerance for these different provinces here. That's just kind of how it's going to go. I think we'll be able to preemptively get our troops in positions to smash these out. Plus, we have a large army. We'll be able to handle these guys just fine. Not worried about that unrest as it is. But we are starting with a certain amount of unrest. We have a good transport fleet, so we'll be able to actually shuffle these people over pretty easily, I think. Uh, we could group these guys up and start drilling them at the start with our lousy general. 
Um, we are making just really good money as it is, so I don't think we have to not pay for our guys. I don't think we have to not pay for our forts, but we could just look at our forts and see, are these good forts? Hills, hills, yes, good. The truth is, uh, we don't have a fort in v v Venencia, which is kind of nice. We have a fort in Corfu. I don't know if we actually need that fort in Corfu. I think that actually kind of makes us a little bit more vulnerable, to be honest. Um, it's annoying for enemies, like, like it's annoying having to siege this if you're playing as someone against Venice. But realistically, I mean, you're probably not going to do a big naval invasion on this province when people are sieging that. I, if this is just an opportunity for other people to get worse score. Actually, you know, we'll keep that. We'll keep that because we might be able to actually trap units in Corfu. That's actually really, really good. We could bait units over here and then trap them in the sea. And because there's a fort here, they won't be able to siege it very quickly. So it'll give us time to kind of do what we want. We could trap the Ottomans over here, for example. But eventually they'll siege that, right? And then they'll get away unless we sort of sneak in and maybe siege this and sort of block them from moving out of there by controlling the ocean. So actually, yeah, I think we do want to keep all of these forts. This one here, however, Grasslands, no, we get rid of this. That's, that's, that's pointless. That fort right there is pointless. That's going to be an extra ducat per month. We're making good money. That feels great. We might actually be able to afford... We don't have any money to buy these guys, but I think in a month or two to get the production guy is going to make sense. It would have been nice if we had trade efficiency guy level 1. Getting the discipline good guy could also be really good. What we could do is we could actually play out the first couple months just to lock in the alliance with Aragon and sort of play to sort of notice and evaluate... Uh, kind of the situation with the trade, see how that balances out, and also sort of what Byzantium's alliance network is going to look like. Aragon, let's get the royal marriage here. Good. I think we might actually... Yeah, we're going to be dropping the Albanian guarantee. We're going to be revoking this if we can. Influence actions, revoke guarantee. Yeah. Sorry, Albania. Good luck. Good luck to you, dude. Good luck to you. Lucas joined a trade league. Guys, are we in charge of a trade league? Are we invite to trade league? Need at least 1% trade share in Cena's home trade node. 1% trade share. Invite to trade league? Ragusa, would you like to join our trade league? I actually don't exactly know how this works, to be completely honest with you guys. I'm almost kind of thinking if we can invite these guys to the trade league, I think that doesn't count as a diplomatic relation, I don't think. Being in a trade league gives minus one diplomatic relation. Is that for them or for us? Let's try this, guys. Each member agrees to trade transfer power to its leader. Leader must have at least minus 50 prestige to continue leading the trade league. So if we lose a lot of prestige, they'll be bad. But for the most part, I think that's going to be good. It's going to put us over this, right? But I think it's just once. I think we can also like add it here. Here's what we can do, I think. Again, I've never played Venice before. I've never played any of these nations that sort of uh, let's revoke the guarantee and try to just scoop up a big, tr make a big trade league here. But I could be misunderstanding the mechanics on this. So February 11th, we'll be able to revoke this. We're kind of just doing some opening moves, just kind of going through our opening strategy to see if... The, there we go. We've revoked. Now we don't... There we go. So we're using one of our diplomatic relations. It just reduces a diplomatic relationship slot. We are leading a trade league. Great. Cool. So let's see if we can get anybody else in this trade league. Would you like to join the trade league? Presumably, am I wrong? But I think we want as many people as possible to join our trade league. We want as many people as possible to join the trade league. Like... Now, I think what we could do is we could use our ships to sort of like uh, gain trade power in Genoa, and then we could actually use that to add Siena to the trade league. I don't know what would happen if we just temporarily did that and then remove them. Let's keep seeing. I think to join a trade league, you have to be a one province miner. Is that true? 
Cypress, would you like to join? I'm just kind of feeling this out, guys. I actually don't know how this works. Cypress is in Aleppo. So let's see if we if we protect trade in Aleppo. Let's see what happens here. I'm just kind of feeling this out, guys. Ugh. We've been excommunicated by the Pope. I don't know exactly how this is going to work. They still want to join, though. 1% trade share in a Cyprus home trade mode. Okay, next month, is are we going to have 1%? I mean, presumably, these ships that are going around protecting trade here is doing something for us, right? What if we move these guys over to Genoa now? For some reason, we actually can't reach Genoa. Just some weird thing going on there. It's not letting us actually protect trade in Genoa. Saying that actually protected trade to Alexandria is going to be the best bet here. We could continue to add more people. What about Mantua? Okay. They'll join if we butter them up a little bit. So we could work, we could do that. Oh, what about these guys right here? They just don't like us. Yeah, the problem the fundamental problem is we just got excommunicated by the Pope. So the Pope doesn't like us. That's just one of those, you know, we got lucky with the Austrian alliance. Um, in fact, Austria is really not feeling us because we got excommunicated. A few people are not feeling us here. We're gonna have to do some serious, serious like diplomatic shenanigans here. Naples has gone free. Naples has gone free. That's going to be kind of a bummer. I think we're going to want to butter them up so they just, I mean, they desire Corfu, it seems. I don't know. Naples could be an interesting uh, avenue for expansion, actually. I think of all the Italian nations, Naples is the one that no one's going to care about. Aragon dropping Naples, though, or, or Naples deciding to go independent is kind of a bummer there. Uh, we are about to get our spy networks on Serbia. And what I want to do is to end this SWOT analysis here is I just want to kind of see what the situation is going to be like would we declare war with these with these countries, right? So let's wait till next month. Will these guys join the trade league? They like it. Yeah, they will. Okay, let's get them in the trade league. Let's butter up Austria. That's going to be very important. Very important. We do not want Austria to... This is the only claim we'll be able to get on Serbia. It's the only one we're adjacent to. We could also get one on Byzantium here. We cannot reach Constantinople. They're at war right now with these guys, actually, which is kind of interesting. We don't want them to actually take all that land. That's that's gutsy as as Byzantium there a little bit. Let's make the uh, let's let's put a claim on them there. I think we want to keep building more spy network with Byzantium. So let's see what happens. Let's pretend we are going to declare war on these countries. Byzantium. Allied to Serbia. Interesting. They're allied to Serbia. What the heck? Ottomans are guaranteeing Serbia. Really? Really? But if we attack Byzantium, if we attack Byzantium, we set our troops up here. If we control the seas, this is good, right? We've built up our navy. Essentially, what we would do here, let's just do this really, really quickly. Let's get these troops sort of transported down here, here. Okay, it's going to take a little bit. And let's get ready to attack Byzantium. Although there's a few, there's a few issues going on here with even the AI's thought process on this. Um... And it looks like, yikes. Yeah, okay, hold on. You guys go to there instead? <sighs> Apiris is actually winning this, like, in a way, right? Let's grab these 13,000 troops. Let's actually put them over here so that we can actually get ready to beat up um, Serbia. Let's get ready to beat up Serbia there instead. It'll be interesting to see what kind of military access we end up getting down here. 
Serbia has declared war on Albania, which I didn't quite see that coming, but that's actually going to be kind of interesting. One random skill of each candidate has been changed by one. You know what? Let's just uh, go with the heart of the cards here. I mean, diplomatic power is not great, but this guy just isn't isn't going to be great. And we're going to avoid taking some negative Republican tradition. So let's just do this. Hey, a 612, that works for me. That works for me. Not as good as the guy we had, but there you go. Can we make this guy into a, into a general? We can. It seems like we just get new dudes all the time. I mean, I don't know. Let's just let's just roll that guy and get him in, and get him into play. We don't really want Serbia to actually sort of like siege down um, Albania. That's just kind of an unfortunate reality. Essentially, what we're going to do here, though, is we will attack. Um, we will attack into uh, Byzantium. That'll call Serbia into a war. We will move to basically wipe out Serbia. Now, the thing about Serbia is hostile fort. Really? What a hostile fort. We're just going to kind of stand here. This is Highlands. Oh, no. Okay, I made a mistake. I wasn't paying attention. Or go, go home, dude. Go home. Here, go, 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 go. Protect the trade fleet. Protect the trade fleet. Okay. Yeah, that was a huge mistake. We just got beat up again. Our trade fleet is not doing very well. Just stay there, dude. Stay there. Cancel your mission. What we could do is we could try to swoop in here. We do need to get that admiral after all. So we are at least controlling the Aegean Sea here. They are not going to be able to move to this province here. Serbia is trying to siege down this province here. I just remembered something, guys. Holy cow. This is huge. This is huge. That fort's really blocking. Our ability to move around here is really blocking. I just realized something. If we attack, we don't have to own this fort. We do not have to own this fort. We just need military. We need military access through Albania. Albania, we're trying to help you out here, man. Give us the military access. If we attack into this province, we will actually be the defenders because these guys are sieging a mountain fort. So we can wipe them out. There goes the Serbian army. There goes the Serbian army. Done so. They're done. Serbia is going to lose this war. Let's send enough guys here to work on this fort, because that's obviously going to be a problem. We can move to... Um, Serbia is going to try to rebuild in these areas. It's a little bit of a bummer. I think if we get a military access through... Can we move to these other areas yet? Sort of? I think if we get military access through Bosnia, this will actually let us sort of navigate a little bit more fluidly in this area. There we go. So let's get these guys down here. And we can actually just remove our military access with Albania. That's fine. We've done what we needed to do there. Let's get our transport fleet around. Pick these guys up, get them down here, start sieging down Athens. And for the most part, guys, I didn't mean to make this such a long episode, but Venice is such a complicated, interesting country. You know what I mean? Such a complicated, interesting country, but it is a powerful country. And I think for the most part, we are now in a position where I think we have won the, uh, the war here, right? We've won the war here. We are going to have to reinforce with these troops. It looks like there's a thousand dudes here. It'd be really, really cool if the Albanians could help us with this, but it looks like they're going to be jerks. Uh, what we could do instead is we could drop off just a thousand guys here, grab these dudes, and try to do like a quick sort of battle before these guys sort of get feisty with us. Oh, okay. 
I'm kind of curious to know if we're going to be able to actually move a guy all the way. Nope, we still can't get through the Ottoman land, right? Now, it looks like for the most part, uh, Byzantium has moved their troops over here. So this is a little bit of a sketchy situation. This is a sketchy situation. They could totally attack us. Not really that concerned about this. This makes everybody happy. That's fine. Yes, let's gain a claim on that. Don't care about the Ottoman opinion of us. They already hate us. Oh. Can we get out of here in time? Fifth? Second. Nope. We have to fight him. That's not great. We have insufficient support. It was a quick battle, but that's still dudes that, dudes that we lost that we really didn't have to lose. Dudes that we lost that we didn't have to lose. Three thousand dudes there will actually allow that to be done. We could just build up. We have tons of, not tons of manpower, but we could get more troops. And I think more troops are going to be really, really good for us here. Yeah, let's just get some more troops raised up. And there we go. The war is going to be won. So these were just opening moves, right? This was just a proof of concept. Going through the initial battle was simply a proof of concept as to how we could start with Venice. The bulk of the SWOT analysis is just sort of making, is devising the strategy, right? The point of the SWOT analysis is just to devise the strategy, not necessarily to prove that it works. Um... I think for the most part, it's just, it's it's weird because there is no reason for you guys to trust that I kind of know what I'm doing, but I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, we have some uh, final thoughts on some successful campaigns that we've done as some difficult nations like Artabil, or as the Irish, or as Scotland, or as uh, Najd, or other countries that are in vulnerable positions. And this is simply just an exercise for me to get a little better at the game. And it's also fun to do, right? It's fun to look at a new country and see what the situation is and what your opportunities are and what your threats are and stuff like that. And, and to piece out that that diplomatic web at the beginning of the game. And that's all we're doing here as uh, Venice. And we have a successful war. We could take the gold from Serbia. We can beat up... Uh, we might be able to actually take Constantinople proper. That'd be a very aggressive move, but we could do it. We have a good alliance network with Austria and Aragon. And basically the point is... We've done a, a basic sort of opening move. We have, it's not that we're telling you how to play Venice. I've never played Venice before. This isn't a strategy on how to play Venice. You would expect that from someone who's mastered Venice, who's played Venice before. This is an exercise on how to develop your own strategy for the country that you're playing. Yes, we're playing as Venice. That's an interesting experience. Venice is a unique country, but with the process that we went through is the same that we'd go through for any process. That's what we're trying to teach here is the exercise of what we're doing. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching this uh, sort of SWOT analysis and open moves for a random country. In this case, it was Venice. I will see you guys in the next one.